Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with a compilation video of 10 quick, easy, great looking winter DIYs that you still have time to make and display now that you've probably taken your Christmas decor down. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. Today's first DIY is going to be this paint stick snowman. I'm going to use two three packs of five gallon paint sticks from Lowe's, some of this orange fun foam, and some various greenery, some puffy paint. First thing I'm doing is taking one of those paint sticks and cutting it down to about 12 inches. Then laying the other five face down, I'm taking some of these giant craft sticks from Walmart, trimming the ends off of them, and I'm gonna use my wood glue to glue about five of these pieces across the back of my other paint sticks to hold them together. Then here's my paint stick that I cut. I'm gonna draw it at an angle. This lets me know where I will stop my white paint and then paint black above that line. So using my white Waverly chalk paint, I'm just gonna give the majority of these paint sticks a coat of white, then flipping it around, like I said, I'm gonna paint the rest above the line with my black chalk paint. I'm also going to paint the paint stick that we cut black as well as this will be the brim of the snowman's hat. Once everything's dry, I'll use my hot glue to glue that cut paint stick across the space where the two paint colors met. And now we have our snowman and his hat up top. Next, taking this piece of orange fun foam, I'm just gonna free draw um, a carrot nose for our snowman. You could use this foam, you could use felt. If you happen to get any of the jute twine carrots from Dollar Tree around Easter time, you could put one of those on. Just use your imagination. Then using some of my Elmer's paint markers from Walmart, I'm just gonna draw some eyes on my snowman. And we'll also use this paint marker to add some details to the nose and draw a smile as well. Next, I did take some scissors and just kind of round out those sharp corners on our carrot nose and we're gonna go and glue this on to our snowman's face. Then I wanted to add a little bit of detailing on the hat, so I'm just using some various florals and greenery that I have. These have a nice winter look to them, not too Christmassy, and some of these white winter berries as well. Next, I'm taking a piece of a red and black buffalo check fleece scarf from Dollar Tree. This is about maybe a fourth of the whole scarf and I'm gonna glue it here on this left side, wrap it around the snowman and then we'll kind of loop it around as if it's tied around his neck. Just kind of arrange it how you want and then you can use a little bit of glue to tack it down. Next for the finishing touch, I'm taking some white puffy paint. I got this at Walmart. And I'm just gonna add this so that there's some snow on the top of his hat dripping down and then also on the brim of his hat as well. And I really feel like this was that finishing touch that just added the detail needed to this snowman. And here he is finished, so, so cute. And really for just a few dollars in supplies, you can make this really good sized snowman to be on your porch or even by your fireplace.
For DIY number two, we're gonna make some Let It Snow wood blocks. You can use this idea with a variety of seasons and themes. I'm actually gonna use four of these wood cubes from Dollar Tree and this Let It Snow stencil from Magnolia. So even though I'm only showing three, I am going to end up using four of these blocks. I'm just gonna give each of my blocks a coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Then taking this stencil from my Magnolia website, I'm gonna put one word on each of our blocks. I will need to use two blocks for the word snow, but here you can see I'm doing the word let, and I'm using this dark blue um, chalk paste. So there's let, and I'm gonna flip the stencil around and also add one of these cute snowflakes up to the top corner. Next, I've taken two blocks and I've hot glued them together so they don't move. And I'm using them for these two snowflakes and also the word snow. And on our fourth and final cube, we'll do the word it with another snowflake or two. Now you can arrange your blocks in a line like this or go ahead and put them all four together in a square. Tie them with a piece of Dollar Tree Buffalo check wired ribbon and you have a really cute shelf sitter for winter or something you can add to a tiered tray. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And I hope everyone hits the bell. Make sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. And if you're one of my returning viewers or subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and your continued support. DIY number three is a fun one you can make with some recycled cans. I'm using some larger soup cans and some smaller ones as well. I am using this small record for one of the hats and we'll also use this small saucer and these smaller tomato sauce cans for a smaller snowman. So it would be easier probably to spray paint your cans with white spray paint. I, however, did not have any, so I'm giving all of these cans, these three cans, a coat of white Waverly chalk paint. And then once those are dry, I am going to hot glue those together, stacked up three tall. I do have some other cans, one more of these tall ones that I will spray paint black for part of this snowman's hat. So we'll get those three stacked up nice and tall. Here is the small record that we're going to use along with that black can for our snowman's hat. So just going around the edge of the black can with some hot glue and then we're going to glue it down onto the center of the record. Now we will do essentially the same thing with our smaller cans, our snowman, and I'm using this little teacup saucer. You can use the lid of a larger can for this and just gluing the small can on top. Actually, I'm gluing the body of the snowman onto the saucer and then we'll glue the top of the hat on as well.
For the scarves on the snowman, I'm using some strips of a plaid fabric I got at Walmart. And I'm just using Sharpie marker to draw some ovals for some eyes. It is a little difficult with the bumpy ridges on the can, but just do your best. It's, it's handmade, right? Use the Sharpie also for a smile. And then I'm gonna draw a nose shape with pencil and then take some of my orange acrylic paint and a really thin brush to paint on the orange for the nose. If you do have an orange paint marker, you could use that as well. I did then use a white paint marker to add a little bit of accent to the black part of the snowman's eyes. Then I went back to my Sharpie and I did outline the carrot noses with a little bit of accent, mostly to hide the fact that they were a little rough with this bumpy can. Then add some lines to make it look like a carrot and do the same to the smaller snowman as well. To decorate our snowman's hats, I'm gonna take some ribbon and wrap it around the base of the hat, just using Dollar Tree ribbon and some hot glue to secure those in place. We'll also add some greenery and a little bit of Christmas florals that you want, whatever you have on hand, to the hats as well. And finally, we'll tie some scarves. Like I said, with this material I got at Walmart, it was a fat quarter and pretty inexpensive. Just find something that you like with the colors you like for your color scheme, tie it around, glue it in place, and your cute little snowmen are ready to display wherever you would like. DIY number four, we're gonna make some snowflakes out of tumbling tower blocks. If you cannot find tumbling tower blocks, you could take this same idea and use one gallon paint sticks, cutting it into different lengths. So what I'm gonna do with the tumbling tower blocks is I'm gonna make three lines of six blocks glued end to end with the wood glue. This will be for one snowflake. And then I'm also going to make three lines of five tumbling tower blocks. We're gonna make a slightly smaller snowflake as well. So there you can see on the left here, I'm painting the three lines that have six and then the ones on the right there each have five. Up at the top, I've got some single tumbling tower blocks we're gonna paint as well that we're gonna glue on. So here's my three lines of six tumbling tower blocks. I'm stacking them and gluing them together at the center there to make kind of the base of the snowflake shape, the six points of the snowflake. I'm gonna do the same thing with my lines of five tumbling tower blocks. And then, like I said, we're going to use those single blocks and I'll show you how we're going to glue those on to make our snowflake shapes. So for our smaller snowflake, these have the five uh, long sticks. We're just gonna take one and glue it across the end, kind of like a T, and that will be the finishing of that snowflake. Then for our larger snowflake, we're gonna take two tumbling tower blocks and glue them kind of at uh, angles like this, just to give a different look to the ends of this snowflake. And that's all there is to it. Really, you can use your imagination, make these as big or as small and different as you'd like. A real inexpensive way to add some winter decor. 
For a complete list of all the supplies I've used in today's projects, check the description box below the title of this video. Usually you have to hit a little down arrow to open that up. There you'll see a complete list for each project as well as links to my Magnolia Design Co. website and my Amazon storefront. For DIY number five, we're gonna make a fun wreath for winter with this little owl ornament. Um, a wreath of your choice. This is a like a wicker wreath. I would have preferred a floral foam one, but we're going to also use three of these microfiber dust cloths that you can get at Dollar Tree as well. So we're just going to cover the wreath, whatever kind of wreath you have, with three of these microfiber cloths to give a nice winter snowy look. And it doesn't take very long at all to glue these on. You're just gonna glue the um, center right around the wreath there and then in the middle where the dust cloth comes together, you're going to try to keep that on the inside of your wreath. But just use the hot glue and you should be able to wrap three of these around your wreath. Now, if your wreath is a little bit larger or smaller, you'll need to adjust how many of these you use. But I can pretty much always find these white microfiber cloths in my Dollar Tree. Now for the decorations on my wreath, I'm using some items I have on hand left over from Christmas. One is this owl that was an ornament and I'm just gluing that to one of the sides inside my wreath, adding back in this greenery and these little plastic pine cones that were part of the ornament as well. Then I'm going to take a package of the small green bottle brush Christmas trees that I got from Dollar Tree. I think there's about six in there. And I did take the base off some so that I could just put hot glue on the metal there and poke that into my wreath through the microfiber cloth. Now, if you had a foam wreath, that would be easier for this step. You can glue the bases as well. Just make like a little forest inside your wreath. Now taking this burlap wired ribbon, I'm gonna show you kind of a different way to piece together a bow. I'm making a loop here and then tying it in the center with some jute twine to get the, the two bow parts of our bow that we're gonna put on our wreath. Tie that in a really tight knot and then you can cut off the excess of the twine. Then you can see I have another piece that's just a straight piece. We're gonna dovetail the ends and then we're also gonna tie that in the center. Now what I could have done is laid the loop on top of the straight piece and tied them all at the same time but just do whatever method works for you. Then I'm taking another smaller piece, folding it in thirds, and I'm gonna wrap it and hot glue it around the middle part of the bow just to finish off the bow and cover up that jute twine. Then, so when I, then once I have all my three pieces put together, we will glue them together and attach it to our wreath. And here's our finished snowy owl winter wreath. Really, you could change this out with whatever ornaments or decor that you have, and this would be super cute leading into February. DIY six is another fun snowflake art. I'm going to repurpose a couple of 12 by 12 wrapped canvases. I'm gonna use some one gallon paint sticks and some of these wood snowflakes from a local thrift store. Now this was a project we did in the summer. I'm just going to use my razor blade to remove the canvas from these frames. I love these really nice wood frames and you'll need a staple remover as well. Now once I get to the frame from my canvas, I'm gonna use my antique wax. I'm gonna brush it on and then wipe off the excess just to get a nice, dark stained look on our wood frames. I am going to do two of these. Then taking, like I said, a couple of these wooden snowflake shapes. I got mine at a local um, craft store. Uh, you can find these at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, 
or you could even make your own snowflakes out of craft sticks. I'm gonna fill in the holes and then I'm gonna paint one of my wood snowflakes with crimson red. The other one I'm going to paint with a navy blue acrylic paint. Next, I will need 10 paint sticks for each of my signs, and I'm gonna paint all 20 of those paint sticks with pool blue. I may have had to trim these a little bit um, so that they would be the size to go across the back of our frame. So once I have them all lined up, I'm gonna take hot glue, and one at a time, I'm going to glue down these paint sticks that are painted with pool blue across the back of each of our frames from our canvases. This is gonna give us a nice backdrop for our snowflakes. Then once we have those paint sticks on both of our frames, we can just take some hot glue and glue down our painted snowflakes to the center of each sign. And here's our finished snowflake art. I love these. I feel like they're so classic. Of course, you could change up the colors for whatever you prefer for your winter decor. For DIY number seven, we're gonna make some super cute winter mittens using two of these navy blue oven mitts, two more of those microfiber dust cloths, and some greenery or florals of your choice. So taking the dust cloth, I'm going to place it where I want it on the oven mitt to make it look like a winter mitten with a nice furry cuff on it. And then simply all we're going to do is use hot glue to glue it one little area at a time onto our oven mitt. We do not want to glue our oven mitt shut though because that's where we're going to stuff it with some greenery. So just keep wrapping and gluing down the dust uh, cloth. I think this is a super cute, easy idea. You could do this with red oven mitts at Christmas time to make some Santa's mittens as well and fill it with Christmas florals. Now I'm gonna use two different of these wood uh, snowflake ornaments from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna, like we did in the last project, I'm gonna paint them red, and then I have a couple smaller ones, I believe these are from Hobby Lobby, that I'm going to paint white. We're gonna add these as a little bit of decoration on that white fuzzy part of each of our mittens. So you can see I'm layering a smaller snowflake on top of the center of a larger one, and then we're going to glue that down to the white fuzzy part of each of our mittens. Then the last step for these is to just take your time, hot glue inside the oven mitt, and you can pinch that in there. Um, whatever greenery or florals or whatever other decoration you want to add in there. So I'm gonna do both of these pretty much the same using these different greeneries that I have, as well as some winter berry looking things. Now then, once you have the florals or the greenery in, you can add jute twine hanger to the back or what I did is I simply to hang these on the wall I pushed a push pin from the inside of the oven mitt into the wall through the back side of the oven mitt I hope that makes sense but find a way you can hang these you could tie them together and hang them on your door 
super cute for winter. If you're on Facebook, I would love it if you would head over to my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page. Make sure you're following that. I do go live there three times a week doing different projects than what I'm doing here on YouTube. DIY number eight is going to be another mitten. This time we're gonna make a stuffed mitten door hanger using some polyfill, some canvas cloth, some paint, and this stencil from Magnolia. So my method for doing this was to first find the shape that I wanted for my stuffed door hanger. I printed it out from the computer. Then I took a piece of poster board because I wanted it big, and I just put it in the center and kind of traced around the shape, trying to leave the same amount of space. So basically I'm enlarging this by the same amount, hopefully all the way around. And I'm just free drawing it with my pencil. Then we'll cut that out and we'll use this larger mitten shape to trace onto our canvas cloth. Now this is one piece of cloth, it is folded in half so that when I trace and cut out this mitten, I should have two that are pretty much exactly the same. So we'll cut that out, and then, like I said, we'll have two mittens. We're gonna set one of them aside, and now we're just going to work with our front piece. I'm gonna paint this with my chalk paint. First, I'm gonna draw a line where my little cuff is going to be, that's where I will change paint colors. And I'm gonna stick with blues. I'm gonna paint the majority of this mitten on the canvas with ocean, and then we'll flip it around and we'll do the lighter blue, which is called pool, on the cuff side. Then we will make sure this dries completely before we move on to the next step. Once our paint is dry, I'm gonna take a piece of black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and just glue that across where those two paint colors meet. It just cleans it up and gives a little added interest to our mitten. Then just flip it over and fold the ends inside, glue those down. This is just gonna be cleaner than trying to cut them and make them not fray and so on. Now we're gonna put our back piece back on and we're going to glue these together just a little bit, starting up here at the cuff, kind of a straight area, and gluing those together with the hot glue. Now I've only glued my mittens together around the light blue cuff part, but the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take my stencil from Magnolia Design Co. You can find these at monarchmomdiy.com, and I'm gonna use some white chalk paste to stencil this really cute image on the front of our mitten. While our stenciled image is drying, we can also take this paint marker from Magnolia, and we're just gonna add a little bit of detailing around our mitten stuffy. I'm just doing lines and dots just to give a little bit of a whimsical look and to kind of set apart each of the sections of our mitten. Once the stencil is dry, as well as the paint marker, we will start filling our mitten stuffy so that we can get this ready to hang on the door. So that top part was already glued together so I went ahead and stuffed that as much as I wanted. Then I'm gonna just glue a section at a time, stuff it, glue some more until we get all the way down to the bottom of our mitten where we will do the final stuffing and finish gluing it completely together.
Lastly, I'm just going to add a piece of jute twine to the back of the stuffy, just making sure we glue it down really well underneath the twine and also on top. Once that's completely dry, you can hang this on your door. You could add a bow to this or some more greenery and florals if you'd like. I kind of just like it plain and simple with the bright colors and the gorgeous stencil. For DIY number nine, we're going to make some of these wood block snow friends. I'm going to use six more of the craft cubes, but I'm also showing one of the wood drawers. If you happen to be able to find some of these, you can use the cubes from these as well. You would just want to stack two smaller ones and two larger ones together. So like I said, I'm using six of the craft cubes and I'm going to wood glue these together into three sets of two to make our three different snow friends. Now maybe you only like to make one or two of these ideas. Hopefully you like at least one of them. We're gonna make a snowman, a penguin, and a gingerbread person. So one of our pairs we're going to paint completely black one we're going to paint completely white and the third set will be this kind of nutmeg brown color that I have as an acrylic paint from Walmart. This will be our gingerbread person. Then using a pencil, I'm just gonna draw some of the details and on this penguin here, we're going to paint this uh, rounded area that I drew out with white to be the center of our penguin. Most of the detailing on these three friends are gonna be with these Elmer's paint markers. I get these at Walmart. Um, for anything black or actually any colors, you could use Sharpies if you have those on hand. You could also use acrylic paint if you have maybe like a toothpick or something small to make these small dots and noses that we're going to be making. to make some cute little cheeks on our snowman and gingerbread person. I did take a really skinny brush and have some pink mixed with some white acrylic paint just to make this really light pink. But of course you can decorate these however you like. Just take the idea and make it yours. Next, I decided to bring out my puffy paint again. I didn't like how this white paint marker looked. And for a gingerbread person, right, this would be like icing. So I decided to trace it with my puffy paint to make it raised and look more like cookie icing. Now we're going to work on the penguin. I have also an orange paint marker to make his little beak and his two little feet. Then we'll also add some eyes and tracing around the beak and feet with black. And of course, we'll also use the orange for our snowman's carrot nose as well. To finish off each of our friends, I'm gonna use a different thin ribbon to make a little scarf around. We're just gonna tie it in a knot and then you can glue it down, trim it however long or short you want. For the snowman, we will also be hot gluing one of these hat ornaments from Dollar Tree to the top of him as well to finish off our snowman.
And here are our three different wood block friends. I hope you liked these and you could definitely make more than one of each of these friends. And finally for DIY 10, I'm going to take this wooden sled that I got at a thrift store and make it over for winter. You could also use one of the Dollar Tree sled signs and do this same idea. So this is that really light colored shiny oak. So I'm just gonna start by painting my entire wood sled with truffle, the dark brown Waverly chalk paint. Then using a chippy brush, I'm gonna go over the entire thing with white obviously though not covering the brown just so it has kind of that old distressed look to it I wanted kind of an old timey look to this sled. So I'm using some really wide kind of loose burlap ribbon from Walmart. I'm making a loop and then I'm tying it together like you've seen me do before with jute twine in the center. We're gonna tie that twice, make it a really tight knot, but I'm not going to trim off the excess of the twine yet because I'm going to add to that one of these really pretty, I think, white Jingle Bell ornaments from Dollar Tree. It's just got some very neutral um, ribbon and greenery on it. I'm also gonna add a couple more of these small silver bells from Dollar Tree as well, just to add some interest to the center. Then once all of those are tied on, then we'll go ahead and trim the excess to our twine. Once we have everything arranged how we want it, we're just gonna glue this bow with the bells to the center of the top part of our sled or sleigh, whichever you prefer to call it. And you can see I just added a little bit of greenery on top of the bow and that is our sled or sleigh makeover. Thanks again so much for being here today. I'd love to know which of these projects was your favorite and we'll see you next time. Take care.